Here with some remedies to ease your hangover symptoms, family physician and college health expert, Dr. Jill Grimes. She's also the author of the Ultimate College Student Health Handbook. God, where were you 20 years ago when I needed you? <laughs> oh, man, sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm always thinking, you know, water, coconut water, Gatorade. What are some uh, remedies if you're uh, not feeling so good this morning? So, well, you hit the nail on the head. The key is definitely rehydration. And it's better, you know, water's good, but electrolyte, Oral rehydration solutions are better. So things like Pedialyte or Cure, uh, there's many different brands out there now. And you do not want to use a straw. You want to just, you know, sip on it, but skip the straw because you don't want to introduce any more air into your stomach and increase that nausea. Is there something you can eat as well? Do, do eggs help with the hangover? <laughs> So you basically, there, there's no magic food. What's wrong with uh, that? that? You'll have that. Magic you question. Swear by the, you know, Big Mac or whatever. But um, no, you want to start low, you know, go slow. So you start with sipping on the electrolyte solutions and then maybe advance to, if you have it, a uh, broth like chicken noodle soup broth because that has a lot of sodium in it and helps you retain fluid and then go to simple carbohydrates like crackers or a banana and then get into the proteins if you're actually having hunger by then see that wasn't a crazy question it wasn't crazy but most people had their hangover food is oh i, I always hear you need something greasy i need a fries i need a burger and yeah. not a frittata or whatever you, you, know, you know what i mean i that's what i always heard but apparently start light and go with simple carbs the broth and maybe the crackers the the fruit what have you yes start low go slow please do not jump into the garbage burrito <laughs> um on a more serious note binge drinking is a problem in this country what are some of the long-term uh health detriments that go along with it <laughs> Well, I think we're gonna find out as moving forward, binge drinking has become a bigger problem than it has been before. We know that it causes a lot of damage to the liver, but it also, people that's what people think about. We think about um, cirrhosis and liver problems, even liver cancer, all of which can uh, happen. But I think what people don't realize is that um, long-term alcohol overuse is also associated with a lot of other cancers, including breast cancer. Wow, well, that's sobering, uh, pun intended. Um, so, uh, I mean, and listen, COVID didn't help because <laughs> people were, no. you know, uh, they really, they've studied how much drinking went up in this country in those very dark, uh, that very dark time after COVID. People were alone, uh, yeah. they were depressed, everything seemed uncertain, you couldn't have your normal social or professional outlets, and people, you know, said, well, I'm sitting here, might as well crack open this or that. And, and, and I get it, it was, it was a, a tough time. So now that we're certainly past the worst uh, of all of that, uh, do, you, do you have hope that things will get better or is this something that uh, kind of has been baked in a little bit in our country well the habit is really hard to reverse if you started like you know many people especially during covid including medical professionals um were, were coping with the stress by coming home and unwinding with a drink or two and part of the issue is is that it's hard to break that habit because that it's sort of an external trigger that tells you it's time to turn my brain off the good news is there are tons of non-alcoholic cocktails and beers that have improved so much. They used to, you know, just taste like grape juice or whatever. <laughs> but now you have a lot of different choices. And I think there's, as there's more and more public awareness, I think people are incorporating that in to keep the, the, the habit, the relaxation, but not have quite as much alcohol. Yeah, and younger generations, they're saying, no, no thanks yeah. to alcohol more and more. It's becoming a trend. Another reason they'll yeah, live longer. So <laughs> as for us, we're, we're screwed. But oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely it's been a pleasure. Just write, yeah. write us off. <laughs> Family physician and college health expert, Dr. Jill Grimes, thank you so much for coming on this morning. We really do appreciate you taking the time out. And you can grab a copy of her thank book, you. The Ultimate College Student Health Handbook, wherever books are sold.